Hello, Shante with brown sugar top on the black unicorns. Do you, I, I'm like, Shante, do I need to put on makeup? Oh my God. So anyway, um, today I want to talk about CBT, a CBT book. And it's actually part of therapy and you can find one on Pinterest if you want to. You can look it up. I might come out with my own though if I keep doing it. So anyway, um, one thing... I want to talk about first is like this whole Masika thing. I'm not really into these people, whatever, but this is the issue with trauma and like people who actually need help. So Masika was online and she was like, she took her clothes off on her OnlyFans and like bruised and put fake bruises on her body so she could uh, simulate a situation where she would need help. I don't know why that would be something that she would want to do. It was a trigger, okay? Because first off, the, it, it was like really grainy kind of. And it was like, you know, what do people actually need help? Because sometimes, like, I'm not lying. Like, for real, for real, I'm not lying. I actually do need help. Like, I, re I need a relocation. Like, these people have followed me long enough. Like, it is like enough. Enough is enough. Um, and then it come and take me back through and you showing me that you got all these details about my life. That's some stalker type shit. So what I'm saying to you is not a lie. And so for people who really need help, how do they get help if somebody like that, like a famous person is pretending to be something that, that's not happening? Actually in college too, it was a girl. She was like a student. And, um. What happened is, it's like she went over to some guy's house and he kidnapped her for like six, six weeks to like two months or something like that. Um, and that was crazy. Like, it's seriously crazy. Like, he actually kept her. And then she came back to school like nothing, like everything was okay. And now that I've been through everything I've been through, I understand why. Like, you actually have to come back. Oh my god, my eye like look like I got a fucking Uncle Ruckus eye or something. But anyway, so like um she came back to school and she just was normal. Like she was like every like she actually was acting like everything was okay. Um and it couldn't have been. It really couldn't have been because that eye is freaking bothering me. Like it's something wrong with my eye. Like I never knew in my whole life. Oh my god, look at it. Jesus Christ. So anyway, yeah, so um, when she came back, like I said, she just would not, um, she was not the same, like she just act like everything was the same, but then she ended up leaving the school anyway. So yeah, it's like, seriously, like this stuff actually happens to people. And then to how that happens to your friends, like after... I know I told this story about the girl, like we were at, like I used to work as a as a bouncer or whatever. And the reason why they hired girl bouncers is because they wanted them to, they wanted us to like keep the guys from letting girls in. Cause usually if a if a guy gets a blowjob, they'll go ahead and let the girl in. So you can't do that. So what happens is is like um, we end up watching the door. Or, like, if it's events, we'll just, like, walk around outside or whatever. So, this guy is, like, um, he pull up in his car, and he's, like, come on, let's go, you know. And I'm too dark, okay? Because she's, like, I'm going to ask him if you want to go, too. I was, like, nah, you cool. I want to go. I want to go. So, again, he got, like, a drop-top car, and, you know, he doing all this different stuff. So, um, push comes shove. She missing for, like, a few days or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, she, she probably just locked up somewhere with somebody. Like, not locked up like that, but just somewhere with somebody, okay? No, nah, this girl is actually in a crime situation where she actually gets her neck, her throat cut. And I'm talking about deep because her is actually got like a, you can see where he did it. It's like a keloid on her. She got her throat cut and she was thrown into a closet with another girl. And it just so happened the girl was like, I think still breathing too. So they both were kind of like still alive. So they waited for him to leave. And then she got a chance to like get out of the house and like call the police and stuff like that. And so um, 
that's what I'm talking about. It's like, um, man, like it is so many things that happen to people, and just to think about all the stuff they do. One guy I was talking to, whatever he he actually had a situation too. Like the girl, he this guy was his friend. He ended up going to jail. Anyway, he put the girl inside of a fucking cage, like a dog cage. Like, he had trapped her inside of a dog cage. Like, basically, like, the stuff that we go through as women. And we could be fully intelligible, all this different stuff. You know, uh, we get roofied, all kinds of stuff just for somebody to play with us. Like, you know, it's just like, what the fuck, dude? Like... And then, as a woman, for you to bring your nasty ass on a fucking thing, like, you know, and with your clothes off and the bruises and stuff, that shit ain't cute. It's not. This, what you doing? What the fuck you doing? So, yeah, that shit just fucking bothers me. I'm sorry. I'm looking for the, for the behavioral workbook. But it's called a cognitive behavioral workbook. And um, they are just... It's basically like worksheets and stuff where you like help yourself through therapy. Sometimes like creating a plan and different things like that. So like if you have any type of anxiety, you have a plan in place. I'm so honest about mine. I know a lot of people cover up that they have anxiety and all this different stuff, but I feel like if you don't if you're not open about it, then you don't actually get a chance to like heal yourself. So, um, I just so like the cognitive workbook is something you can use um it doesn't all you're not gonna always need it like because I found out like okay the more I went through it it was just like mm, do I really need this um probably not so yeah it's just like just ways of um It's just ways of coping and just like writing down what those things are. And if you are like a auditory or a visual learner, um, it'll start to just become easier for you. Like it's just like I think it's a way to just like kind of take down notes about yourself. You know, take down notes about. And they even have one. I'm looking at this. They have one for teens too. So like on the first page, like it'll be like about you. Like you say, like what you are, like your hobbies, what you do, all this different stuff. And then the next page it'll be, or your next lesson will be like, what about your family? Like maybe you get to draw your family or whatever. So it uses like, you can use it with art therapy, you can use it with dance therapy, you can use it with music therapy, whatever you want to do, write a song, whatever you want to do. And um, then it gets into like creating a plan. Like when you create a plan, like, what happens if I have a true anxiety attack? Um, what happens if just this person is at home? Who is there to help me? All these different things. And so, and it, and I'm looking at this and there's like so many different ones. Like, they have ones to like deal with trauma. And that's the one I'm actually going over. It's like the one that deals with trauma. But then they have like ones for kids. They have ones for teens. They have different ones. But it's cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy. And it's just basically like, just like, what do you do? What do you do? How do I fix this? How do I manipulate myself in order for me to be able to heal and be safe? And so it's just like a book where you just write all these different things down. And so some of those things could be eliminating social media or putting up like sensitive, whatever, you know. I don't flick through the sensitive stuff because it is like, for me, a lot of the shit is triggering like just because i am an empathetic person it is like you got me um yeah i don't i just like why the fuck would you do that anyway so yeah um that's why i'm just like the world yeah um i'm happy i did the one about just like people in mental health and like how you don't need to stay away from mental health. You necessarily, sometimes it's just you have to stay away from the darkness, you know. Um, and that's what the pro That's when it becomes a problem. You see, that's when it all becomes a problem. And that's what Masika was doing. That was some dark shit, you know. It's like, man, don't you know women? 
Jesus Christ, you know how long it takes sometimes to get over the bullshit men put us through? Um, and we were not aware of what they were trying to put us through. So, I mean, women, please be careful with that. Like, there's some shit, you know. My son, too, he'll be like, Mom, don't think about that because, you know, you'll, be, you'll have traumas. Like, no, I won't. I'm just, I am, um, I tell him, I was like, I got to compartmentalize what I do. Like, how I think about it, you know, because somebody might say, oh, my God, you made a sexual joke. You can't do that in front of her. And that's not true. It's not anything like that. It's just I don't want to be triggered in a way like y'all know what they are. I mean, I don't want to be reminded of no dumb nigga. I don't want to be right, reminded of no sick bitch. You know, like, it's just like, for real, y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. I mean, it's like some things, it was just too long. It was too much and too long. And so, yeah, I don't do that. It's distasteful. Um, so, yeah, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's it. Um, but I'm glad. I'm happy to talk to people about it. Not that I want it to be the conversation of my life. Um, even though I talk about it on a show, you know, that's probably the most... Me and my son to discuss any trauma or anything throughout the day unless like something really happens unless something major comes up unless i'm triggered right so really we don't we don't discuss it a lot but i do teach him about just like all the all the things i go through because he's here to see me go through it and that's the hardest part for me but now that i see that he's actually he'll educate himself he'll um find ways for himself to cope he'll find ways for him and the dog to cope sometimes he gets angry uh, like today he got angry because I was having an anxiety attack because I thought that man stole my phone y'all a government phone I was pissed I'm like this man that stole this government phone because okay let me tell y'all why I'm such a perfectionist I am Okay, to the point where even my messes are perfected. Okay, even my messy ass house is perfected, whether y'all want to know it or not. So anyway, I take the phones and I stack them. And oh my God, only a perfectionist would know this. I'm sorry if you are not. I'm sorry if this does not mean anything to you. But I take the phones and I stack them. And so then I move the phones because we don't use them. I just keep charging them. I let them die for a couple days. I charge them. I move them. I charge them. Okay, so when he came and i was already mad at him that kind of stoked the fire right so he came over here and he had an attitude problem i was like you fucking like you serious today nigga like you know so i was already pissed so i think just like coming into that like I, that made me more pissed like this nigga the only motherfucker who would have took this phone well, come to find out, my son got a new bag from somebody, and he put the phone inside the bag. Do you hear me? Put the phone inside the bag. And so, I had to apologize to a, peer, to a motherfucker I don't even like. I did not have to apologize, but I do apologize because... That's just me. That's what I do. But, yeah. You know, this motherfucker been coming over and picking on me. All this shit. <sighs> and I had to apologize. You see how that works sometimes? So, yeah. Alright, let's talk about cognitive behavior therapy. It's a psychosocial intervention that focuses on changing unhelpful thoughts beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. Improve emotional regulation and create a suite of coping strategies to solve problematic issues. And that's pretty much what it is. And so what it is really is just like you looking at those different things and figuring out what it is. So the first one, filtering. Focus on the negative, ignoring the positive. So you don't want to do that. Like That's like, okay, I'm going to tell you what what it helps with okay so filtering when you focus it on the negative you can't see the positive at all and you do that in, in anxiety especially when you have an attack because 
that is what's driving you is the fear. It's like you motherfucker. For me, it's like anger. I I get so angry. Like, you know, it's like no, you don't have to be that angry. You cool. You know, uh, catastrophizing, expecting the worst case scenario, scenario, minimizing the positive. For me, that's kind of like no. Since I had a history of negative shit th being thrown at me. I might think of the negative situation, especially since they keep repeating the same shit over and over again. But for real, for real, I kind of like, I am a positive person. I'm hopeful. Polarized thinking. All or nothing thinking, ignoring complexity. Um, That means you just, uh-uh, it's only this way. It ain't no other way. It's just it. Uh, I was telling my dad i was like if you listen to the kids they'll tell you exactly what to do like they already know me you know the kids know me nope i ain't finna listen to no kids can't no damn kids tell me what to do they're not trying to tell you what to do they just telling you about me so you know the details about me because the stuff that they should know about me comes from the classroom they're the only people who know me like nobody else really knows me sir i'm just trying to tell you so anyway, you can't. You see what I'm saying? Polarized thinking. But see, he won't say that he got a mental issue. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Heaven's reward fallacy. Expecting self-sacrifice to be rewarded. I have that. Because I'm like, no, I have to give it up for my son. Uh, I have self-sacrifice before. And uh, it's no need to. Because it's not going to get you anywhere. It's like, but that's like my last straw. It's like the anxiety comes and it's like, that's just my last straw. Like, just fuck it. Just give it up. Like, I can't take it. I cannot. Because it's like, I I don't care if I did it to you or not, bitch. Get the, just take what, you, take what you need to get the fuck on. Like, I can't. I can't. I don't like stress. You know, people will stress you out. And so, you know, that could be seen as a negative thing. But really, I'm thinking it's a positive thing because I just don't want no stress. You know, so bitch, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck on. You see, or I, if I don't sacrifice and I fight to the end, I'm fun, I'm trying to break every motherfucking thing over your fucking face. Like, it's like I'm trying to fucking hurt you. So, anyway, yeah, self-sacrifice is nah. So, it happens. It does. It's like I believe it could happen to just, more than just me because people will keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. What Wayne say when he say um, a gold digger dig till they find oil? That's exactly what the fuck you feel. Like a motherfucker dig until they find oil. I love you, man. I love you. You know. You know, baby. Okay. Control fallacies. Assumes only others to blame. Assumes only self to assumes only self to blame. So I cannot control how the world sees me or how somebody would abuse me for my views or whatever, right? So then it'd be like, oh my god, it was me. Bitch, no. I'm so, I'm not that bitch. No, it wouldn't be able to do. But, I mean, for real, if I just kept saying, oh, my God, I, you know, I wake up, I didn't take a shower, I didn't put t the right polish on my nails, and, you know, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. That's the other person. So, that's it. Just like now, if I had to, went about the phone, like, what if I just blamed him? Like, I hate him, so now that's his fault. No, it's not. It was not his fault that I got so upset. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't my it wasn't his fault that I didn't look inside the bag, right? I don't like him. That's his fault. But everything else about me being angry with him, that's not that's not his fault. It has nothing to do with me. So you have to come up with that. Um always being right. Being wrong is unacceptable. Being right is is uh, supersedes everything. That's actually a form of manipulation and it's abuse. So, always being right, no, 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 no. I don't care how old you are, it's okay for you to be like, I was wrong. I really, I was wrong. That was straight up wrong, and I really apologize for it. And if they don't accept your apology, that's okay, too. If he pissed off, it's okay, too. That means it's going to be more days without his ass coming over here. I'm serious. Like, I can't stand this man. Okay. Um, fallacy of fairness assumes life should be fair. I don't assume life should be fair, but I do assume that I should have justice. I mean, I feel like as a woman, any woman should have justice if they've been through everything I've been through. Twice. Okay. Um, personalization. Always assuming self-responsible. 
I don't. I don't always get a responsibility to myself. I get a responsibility to other people. But if I can do it myself, I will. Um, I will pass off responsibility. It's not always me. Overgeneralization assumes a rule from one uh, assumes a rule from one experience. Mm, that's called low exposure. So it's like instead of like you looking at all these different answers to the problem that'll happen. But also if you've been through stuff repeatedly, it could happen too. So again, it seems like it's negative, but it's not. And it's like you have to also be safe with yourself and give yourself like, okay, wait a minute. It sounds bad, but is it really bad? It's not. It really isn't. I mean, if you have only had that one experience and now you're moving into more, that's what happens. It's okay. Jump into conclusion. Make assumptions based on little evidence. It happens. I always think kids sold something. I told, I was telling somebody about this. No, I was, t- I was saying this on the podcast. So, we get mad at the police for uh, racial profiling and stuff. But teachers and police actually work for kids. And even though I know the police, like, fuck the police. I'm serious. Especially, I fuck the police. I'm serious. Like, we've been through a lot of shit. And I have been to the police station a number of times and never get help. So, fuck them. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So, um... I was, what was this one? Jumping to conclusions with little to no evidence. I forgot what I was talking about. After I said, fuck the police. That's what I get for being mean. But anyway, yeah, so I I went to the police station. Oh, man, y'all forgot what I was saying. Jumping to conclusions with little or no evidence. I forgot. I, I give up. Emotional reasoning. If I feel it, it must be true. Mm-mm. But yeah, that's true. I think you need to go with your with your gut. Even though other people say you don't go with your gut, they talk about me for going with my gut. Oh uh, uh, yeah, like one person do that, but I go with my gut, and usually my gut is right. So I'm, I'm sticking with that one. Um, as soon as everyone else is at fault, mm-mm, not me. If I did it, I did it. If I didn't, I did it. Expects others others to change. Oh, that's so not me. I'm not a, a it's a fallacy to change. But mm, mm-mm. I'm not trying to change you. I'm trying to keep you like you are. Like cause some people are just so great the way they are. And then others you fuck off. Just get the fuck on. Don't come fucking near me. And then some people I'm just like, oh give me your love. You're so great. Okay, global labeling, extreme generalization. So um, and it'll be like, oh my god, all black men are this. Mm-mm. Even after what I've been through, I know all black men are not like that. I know it. In my soul, I know it. That's what made me start to think about different things. Man, I really wish I could get back to the jumping to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions when I went to the station. How did I jump to conclusions? I don't know. I forgot. Okay, show shoulds. Holds tight to personal rules of behavior. Judge yourself and others if rules are broken. Um, mm-mm. I don't think in... I don't believe in... Um, I just don't believe in it. Like, I don't believe I need to hold you to certain... Code, yes. Street code, yes. Human code, empathy, yes. It's just some shit you don't do. But then... Mm, some stuff we break rules and we do them so it's not an actual thing for me so anyway uh so here are the non-essential cognitive behavior tools so journaling self-reflection identifying through bad thought patterns so again i talked about art therapy and how it was different for um when you do art therapy and you do like art so when you do art, you reflect on, oh my God, I got to change this color. I got to do this. I got to do that. Or maybe I got to make this bigger next time or whatever. When you do art therapy, um, you actually reflect on your feelings. You reflect on why you drew that and what you did this. Don't ever fall for bullshit with art therapy. It's like when they say, oh, you did this because it, it's a list of it online. You can figure out why you did it. But sometimes, like I remember in college, the art therapist, she was like, your friend is crazy. And I was like, I'm telling them. She said, but don't tell them. 
I don't know if that's a trick or something I told him. I mean, like, I'm thinking that's what, that's what a friend would do. Okay, nightmare exposure and rescripting. Treat, night, treat nightmares develop some responses. That could be helpful. But, you know, that's been around since our grandparents. Like, you know, our grandparents teach us about dreams and different things like that. And it was a dream book that came along with that situation. So um that can help you too like you know if you draw out your dreams i used to dream in color i used to dream in this van and it had like all it was like a scooby-doo van but it was better you know it had actually like a sunset on it or whatever and like the beach maybe that's why i want to go to the beach but it's like you see what i'm saying like it's like all this shit you analyze and now i want to be like a, a world traveler or something like that so it makes sense develops new responses that's going to help you, like, develop responses to what's going on. Like, you know, like, wait a minute. Do, am, why would I be afraid of this? What happened? And sometimes you'll find it so fucking off-key. It'll be like you'll be dreaming about dead dogs. And really, it's just like you probably just need a dog in your life. Like, it's not even that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're dreaming of some deep-ass shit. And really, it's just something so simple in your life that you need to change. So, it's good. Relax breathing supports range of issues calms and focuses it's so many different ways to breathe we breathe like doing our fingers or whatever we also breathe when we meditate so that's something and you can wake up and do it too play the script until the end treats fear and anxiety reflects on worst case scenario improves feeling of coping it does okay let me tell y'all because if it's really anxiety it's that when i drew my picture anxiety i just like and what and all the man mouth came some feathers or whatever and it's because if you do if you play it to the end it really ain't that bad you know it's not it's it's really not like you could like the guy could come to the door but he didn't touch me the guy could come to the door and he looked like a certain person and i'm like so scared or whatever and he didn't touch me he didn't he left you know um he didn't say anything that was out of the way he didn't do anything awkward but it'll just like that's the end of it so it's like god thank you as opposed to me going to the door and just like going to fuck off on them and then you know bring let like letting it out longer so play it out to the end unraveling cognitive distortions identifying faulty thinking change uh challenging faulty thinking and this was something where me and my son we started early with this one like where we would have to actually go through the scenario and be like this is not that person this person didn't do anything to us no, we can't do this, you know. Let's go to the hospital, stuff like that. So, again, that's what a CBT book will do. Like, just give you a plan to keep working it out. Because at first, it won't. It basically is like your own data for yourself. And you got to be honest with yourself. It's, if you're not, it's really not going to work. Progressive muscle relaxation. Calming, mindful focus on physical relaxation. Again, that goes with your yoga. Ooh, your peace. I'm sorry, I have been eating drinking playing all today okay cognitive restructuring exploring causes of faulty thinking reframing and restructuring you know cognitive restructuring exploring causes of faulty thinking reframing and restructuring them and that's like the main part of like the cbt journal it's like you actually want to like restructure how your brain is thinking that's part of the healing process of the trauma. Not to say it's going to fully go away. Because sometimes you're going to have to really sit down and be like, that mother, that is not him. That is not her. That is not what's happening right now. That person will not throw a shoe at you. Like, you know, it's just like, shit, you be like, whew, I got to really think about this. Um, But it will help you get there quicker. It's not going to stop it totally, but it'll help you get there quicker. Introsect, inter interoceptive exposure treats panic and anxiety purposeful exposure to sensations of panic instills understanding that sensations not dangerous mm, excuse me but mm, treats panic and anxiety purposeful exposure to sensation of panic um and still understanding that sensation is not dangerous. That That's the worst one for me. Because to me, I think that's fucking torture. I don't like that one. It is torture. It is torture. If you're not ready for it, that shit torture. I'll never be ready for it. I think it's fucking torture. I don't want to see the abusers. I don't want to see them. 
I don't want to see them. I don't want to see them. I don't. Because I actually have negative thoughts about that. And it be fucking up my day. It fuck up my time. It fuck up situations in my life that I don't need to fuck up. It fuck up time with my child. It fuck up with forgiveness. It fuck up with healing. That's one of the ones I would like, keep that shit to your fucking self. Like, I am not on there. That's some white people shit. I'm sorry to say. That's some current insurance kind of shit. I'm telling you, that shit is. It's some Becky kind of shit. I ain't on that shit. That is some straight up white people torture shit. I think they move that shit down from fucking somewhere. That is one part of therapy. I do not. I, I cannot. Oh, I cannot. No, especially after y'all not repeated all this bullshit to me again. Fuck y'all. That shit ain't cool. I'm telling you, don't nobody need to be in no negative shit like that. Fuck you. Ain't nobody, don't nobody need to clap real loud or slam doors and throw people in front of you. What kind of shit is that? That shit is stupid to me. Do not do it. That's that Masika shit. That's what I'm talking about. That's the shit white people do. White people. White people. So the Indian they'll sit there and see you reacting and write it down so they can put it on TV. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm not joking. It sounds stupid, don't it? It really do. It sounds like I'm unintelligible or something. No, I'm telling the truth. They would actually sit there and write that shit down and hand it off to their friends so they can put it on TV. You see what I'm saying? You have a fucking meltdown. And they'll put that shit, they'll do that shit. They ain't no shit to do. White people stupid. They ain't no shit to do. Exposure and response prevention. Purposely exposing self to trigger. Mindfully controlling the response. You see what I'm saying? Why would I purposely, like, I don't even want to be triggered in the first fucking place. I don't even want to be triggered. You know how much time that shit take up? It take up a lot of mind time. Mind time. Time that I could be creating. Time that I could be spending with my child. Time that I could be spending with the dog. It's just time. Gone. And I only got one life. And these motherfuckers want me to spend it triggering myself. I don't believe in either one of those. So I don't, it's only seven of them. Cognitive behavior tools. If you like that shit, then do it. But I think that that shit is some self-harm type stuff. I think it's almost like you actually help and kill yourself. Because trauma really does affect your fucking brain. So why would you help kill yourself? That shit is stupid. Oh my God. You see how pissed I be getting? I be getting pissed. Anyway, so now let's talk about Jamie Foxx. Look, y'all, I, I was on the phone like this, going through the pictures, showing my son stuff about Jamie Foxx. Y'all know how bad I had to talk about Kevin Hart for my son to get to, like, Jamie Foxx. I said, you know, Kevin Hart don't even grow no more. Like, he actually is a grown man. Like, he your size, and he a grown man. I had to tell my son that. You, he, you, he, he is a grown man, and he is size of a kid. I say, you know, he can't even wear, he still wear kid clothes. I say, I think he even wear toy clothes, like toy clothes, like Ken doll clothes. I say, have you ever noticed, like, every time he have on pants, he got a line, a line up the side of them motherfuckers? My son was like, Mom, Mom, don't talk about Kevin Hart. Don't talk about him. You know what I'm saying? I know Kevin just had a baby, too, so, I, you know, I kind of want him to get some good vibes going on in his life. So, anyway, like, I'm like, you see this line up beside this nigga that leg, you know. Maybe he didn't just have a baby. I saw a picture. She was still pretty. She had the baby dish. Anyway, so, I said, yeah, he always got that line beside his leg. I said, he probably partially a stripper. You know, I'm just in there talking doggish about kid. I'm like, that nigga don't do nothing. You know, I'm talking bad. So, then I was like, look. Look at Jamie Foxx. <laughs> Say, look, Jamie Foxx, he ride horses. He was like, what? Because I didn't see him in the videos, y'all. I seen the video. He won't even look at the videos. That's why he was like, fuck that nigga. He won't even look at the videos. You hear me? I sent him the videos of Jamie riding a horse. Mm -mm, he don't even look at him. So I'm like, why you like him? I'm like, look at the, look at the, you know, look at the video. He riding a horse. Okay? He, he, he approved. I went back through. I said, look at his dogs. They look like the dogs that he want down the street. I said, look at the dogs on her side. He said, I might like them. 
I was like, really? And then he said, y'all, he just a crush. Like, I ain't never met Jane Fox in my life. I'm telling you, I never met him. I never met him. But if I do, I'm going to try to get to hold his hand for at least 10 days. 10 days. I'm just saying. So, anyway. So, whew, we go through. Go through the pictures again. I say, look at the dogs again. I say, look. And I say, look at his daughters. You know, one of his daughters is about the age of my child, right? They about the same age. And so I say, look at this daughter. So he saw her and she was like, thank you, daddy, for showing me this. And the boogeyman or something like that. Funny thing is, me and my son had just talked about the boogeyman. The boogeyman. So anyway, I say, look at the other daughter. Now, the oldest daughter, he wasn't interested at all. I say, look at her. I say, this is oldest daughter. He He's just like, I don't care. Then I show him daughter, uh, the, the one that's close to his age. He was like, oh, okay. Okay. It's like, see? He said, but if you ever go out with him, he said, make sure you tell him to give me one of them horses. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that boy is crazy. I say, make sure what? Make sure he give me one of them horses. He is not his mama at all. He is not me at all. Make sure you tell him to give me one of them horses. I say, damn. Him boy say he should have want a horse. I like, you silly. He really do want a horse. And all this time, he ain't never liked this man. I say, but he a good guy. You know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah. So anyway, that made me happy. I finally, I was in there too. Like, look at this. Look at, like an idiot. Look, look at this. Look at him. He do this. Look at how he do it. Like, I'm really with this man. No. No, y'all. Why is it important for me for my son to like him, too? It's like, oh, that's your crush, Shante. But he really is a good guy. And I think he a good example of just what a man can do with his family. You see what I'm saying? Like, and I think Kevin Hart is, too. That's why I be fucking with Kevin Hart. But I do think he wear toy clothes. I do. I think that um, Kevin has become a little Ken doll for most designers. Um, I do think that Kevin could probably fit in a box with a screen in front of it. I do. I think that he could come with accessories like tennis rackets and balls. I do. I do think that... Um, I do think that Kevin Hart could possibly not be full human. I think parts of him are plastic. I do. I really am. I'm concerned for his safety at this point. Uh, especially when I see the lines of the side of his pants. I see when I see the lines coming up all the time. And I know Jamie Foxx had a picture of him on his page too. My son said, look, there go Kevin Hart. I said, mm-hmm. And he said, but they don't really look like him. I said, I know because you can't, you can't see his pants. We don't know if we don't, because it's always that. Mm -hmm. You be looking cute, though. He look nice. He look nice. He look nice. Ooh but I'm happy that now I can speak freely about how I feel about Jamie Foxx in my own home without me hearing him say, fuck that nigga. I mean, I, I was like, personally, I feel like, is my son gangster? Like he had came back from we didn't came from like we actually came from Frisco, Texas, which is the suburbs, and he just he you know he has turned into a whole different person here. I'm telling y'all, we have been hoodified. We have been straight up hoodified. But um, mm, 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 mm. but hats off to Kevin and cheers to Jamie, cause you was a fine mother. Oh man, you, oh, oh, Jesus Christ, I like, I like that, I think you are, you just a good example of a human being, a really good example of what DNA can do, you know, DNA and prayer, I think it's DNA and prayer, yeah. So anyway, it's Shantae Brown Sugar Talk on the Black Unicorns. Y'all, please stay well and have just like the best day. Have a good day. Mwah.